So welcome to Gut Check, Eating for Your Microbiome. I'm Megan Green, and I am our registered dietitian at Launch My Health. I'm super happy that you're here joining us today, and I encourage you to chat in in the chat box if any questions uh, or comments come up as we go. So here we go. So with our time today, we'll define what the gut microbiome even is. We'll talk about the benefits of the gut microbiome, and then the top two food categories to focus on to optimize your gut microbiome function. Lastly, I'll share a little bit about our nutrition detox program and uh, share when the next session starts in case you're interested in joining me. So why do we care about, about gut health in the first place? Well, there are many reasons that I won't go through all of them today, but just simply, the gut is the gateway to our health. It is connected to other areas in our body and other areas that we might be experiencing symptoms or disease states, chronic conditions um, in our body that we don't necessarily think of being connected back to the gut. So in functional medicine and functional nutrition, we really think about optimizing gut function first. And so, Knowing about the gut microbiome will definitely help with that and taking action with the gut microbiome will definitely help with optimizing function. So 70% or more of your immune system is housed in the gut. It's called the GALT, the gut associated lymphoid tissue. And why do we care about that? Well, we know that we're all thinking about our immune system, staying well, preventing us from catching any, anything, uh, and how important that is, especially as, as we transition into the next season, um, into fall here. And so when we optimize gut function, we are supporting our immune system. Another interesting fact is that our gut contains 100 million neurons, more than the spinal cord, and our gut also produces some of our neuro neurotransmitters. And so there's a lot going on in there that uh, we might not think of. It's not just our digestion. So just so you kind of understand where the microbiome fits in, in our GI system, there are four functions that it plays. Digestion, of course, elimination, the microbiome, and barrier function. I'll show you the other three first, and then we are going to look specifically at the gut microbiome. Now, you might be wondering why there's a picture uh, of a um, badminton court <laughs> in the background here. And that's because in our gastrointestinal system, we have these microvilli, these finger-like projections, and these crypts, these um, areas where uh, our, our micro, or I'm sorry, our intestines are folded and kind of smushed together is kind of the best way that I can describe it. But these nutrients that are de being digested in our intestines are going through these crypts and microvilli into our bloodstream, into the rest of our body to support our health. So they're super important. And in our body alone, if we were to take that out and spread it out and find the surface area, it would be the size of half of a badminton court. So there's a lot of room in there uh, for a lot to happen. So the one function of the GI system is digestion and absorption, which we know is important uh, and probably expected, so it's helping digest and absorb the energy and the nutrients that we get from the food that we're eating. Elimination is the second function of the gastrointestinal system. It's important because it works with our liver to help with detoxifying and removing the toxins and anything we don't need in our body, out of our body, so uh, we don't, it doesn't create imbalances. So of course, eliminating is a very important function. And then the third function is the barrier. I call this the security system. This is uh, these microvilli here and these crypts. This is where your body's saying, nope, you can't get in, you can get in. We need that nutrient that's going to help in our tissues over here. Um, and that's gonna help us thrive and be well or heal, et cetera. So that's a really important function too. And that supports our immune system. But today, our focus is on that fourth function, and that's the gut microbiome. So we have multiple microbiomes in our body. Our skin also has a microbiome. 
our mouth. I mean, our mouth is connected to our gut, but we kind of think of that separately too, as far as like dental hygiene. And so our gut microbiome is unique though, because it impacts so many areas of our health. So the microbiome technically is the collection of microbes living in our intestines. The microbes are bacteria, fungi, yeast, viruses. Those are just kind of some main examples. And those are good things most of the time. We can have kind of uh, harmful bacteria, fungi, yeast, viruses, and we have some that help our body. And so it's really finding the balance of those cute little microbes there uh, living in our body to help optimize our health. And so I just wanted to share with you too, because there are other ways that this is described that you might hear out there. So the microbe community of these gut bugs is called the microbiome. It's also referred to as flora sometimes and microbiota. So now if you hear that, you'll know what they're talking about. So there are 500 different types of these different microbes living in us. I mean, I kind of think of it as like we're the landlord. And so we are responsible for setting up the environment and maintaining the environment to support these little good microbes so they can thrive and they can make families and they can make neighborhoods and they can make communities. We want communities of microbes good microbes in our microbiome that are gonna help our health. We don't want those microbes that are harmful to our health to be uh, making families, communities, and neighborhoods in our microbiome. So we wanna support the good gut bugs. And we can do that by feeding them certain things and eating certain foods to help with that. So we wanna be good landlords and set up that environment for those communities of microbes. Okay, so why do they matter? They impact our health in many ways. High level here, you can see functions of the gut microbiome. Well, they help with regular digestion, help keeping us regular, having a bowel movement daily, hopefully, or maybe it's multiple times a day. They're gonna help with regularity. Protect against pathogens, so there comes back to that immune system function. They're kind of supporting all those other functions that we looked at with the gastrointestinal system. They're helping regulate the immune function and assisting in vitamin production. So some vitamins are produced when we eat certain foods and they're produced in our gut. They're gonna help with um, producing and then digesting those nutrients and getting them to the rest of our body. Um, and interestingly, uh, most of our gut bugs, our, our microbiome, we're, when we say that, we're really referring to our large intestine. And so we have some in our stomach, some in our small intestine, as we think is where it goes down. But then the large intestine is where we want most of these microbes to be. If they become overpopulated in like our small intestine, that can lead to some different symptoms. Maybe some, um, if there's excess, sometimes that can lead to things like, like well, that would be called SIBO or some bloating, um, maybe some belching, burping, uh, bloating after anything you eat or just drinking water, heartburn, different symptoms like that might be associated with that. But we want them to mainly be in the large intestine. So they help with digestion, absorption, mood, our immune health, and they actually help with our appetite. So depending on the bugs we have there, they're gonna influence us to be craving certain things or not craving certain things. It's pretty cool when I do different nutrition programs with people to see or hear them report the different changes they have in cravings based on what they're feeding their gut microbiome or those bugs uh, and, and also what they're um, eating consistently and not eating consistently. And so the gut microbiome is linked to the development of 50 or more kinds of diseases. So it can help that or harm. Um, and so we wanna be helping our gut microbiome thrive and support our health. I think this example is really cool. Uh, in a 2018 systematic review, you can see here, thinking of diabetes, you know, it's super prevalent. Uh, I see a lot of people for diabetes or prediabetes nutrition. And in the systematic review, it showed that consuming a specific type of food, prebiotic foods, which we'll talk about, or I'll show you a list of those, those support your gut microbiome, 
It improved metabolic and inflammatory biomarkers, AKA they did a blood draw, did the typical, uh, took the typical markers that they'd want, that they would check, and it improved those in women with type 2 diabetes. The foods were, only, were consumed between four days and 12 weeks. So basically, it's, there, this review showed that within just four days of consuming these foods, they saw improvements in these metabolic and inflammatory biomarkers for some of these studies. Not every single person, of course, but enough where they could say between four days and 12 weeks, just four days. So when we are consistent for four days, we're gonna start to see those changes maybe, start to see those improvements, or they're starting to happen even if you don't feel them yet. Pretty cool. And that was with people who had diabetes for six months or 11 years um, diagnosed. So lots of benefits uh, of supporting our gut microbiome and what impacts the gut microbiome. So again, here's the cool part. It's our lifestyle. I think that's cool because we have somewhat, we have control over that, most of the things, right? <laughs> um, and if, if we don't know exactly what to do for them, we can find some help. We can find resources for that. Um, and so our microbiome, our gut microbiome, those bugs living in there, those good bugs, change it and respond to their environment. So if their landlord is not supporting their environment well, or things happen to us like high cro chronic high stress, maybe, or a stressful event, very stressful event, maybe unexpected event that can impact our gut bugs. Again, our brain and gut are connected. Um, and so that makes sense. Surgeries impact our gut microbiome, illness, trauma, eating patterns, of course, what we're eating or what we're not eating, and medications. And so some of these things, maybe we can kind of control. Sometimes there's unexpected things that happen, or maybe we need a medication. Maybe we need to be an, an, on an antibiotic for a while. That's okay, but we want to make sure we're doing what we can to support our microbiome during that time and immediately after, so it doesn't completely get out of balance. An out of balance micro, gut microbiome uh, is called dysbiosis, and we want to be supporting it. Our digestive tract is exposed to 30 to 50 tons of food during the course of a lifetime, and so this is one part that we can make some choices on to help support the microbiome. Um, and then stress. So I'm not a certified life coach, so I stay within my scope with nutrition, but I want you to know how stress impacts your gut um, and your gut micro microbes here. So uh, stress and your gut go both ways. I call it the highway to health. And so uh, when we have high chronic stress, it alters those gut bugs, those microbes, and how those microbes affect your gut immune system tissue, GALT, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Over time, that can lead to immune dysfunction, or maybe it's the opposite. We don't have to think negative, let's think positive. Maybe how we're handling our stress actually has a positive effect on our immune system function. So if you are somebody who gets sick really easily, um, or maybe you have an autoimmune condition, and maybe, or maybe you're just a little more sensitive to when you're feeling stressed, you can really feel it. Managing stress will help your gut microbiome and consuming certain foods to support your gut microbiome will help your mood and how you handle stress. It goes both ways, highway to health. Um, beneficial gut bugs stimulate our immune system production to reduce chronic inflammation. So these gut bugs are sending signals saying, I don't want to have an, an inflammatory response to that. I want to have an anti-inflammatory response to reduce chronic inflammation. Why does that matter? Chronic inflammation is connected to many things, anything with an itis on it, arthritis, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, uh, other autoimmune conditions, fibromyalgia, headaches, migraines, skin issues or symptoms, gut symptoms, brain fog. They don't all have itis on them, but you get what I'm saying. Chronic inflammation is impacted by those gut bugs. And then my favorite one here, some of those gut bugs produce the neurotransmitters, like I mentioned, and those neurotransmitters, those gut bugs, there are some correlations with which neurotransmitters they impact. And so when we think about like depression and anxiety, 
For instance, depression, there's um, many medications that are trying to increase serotonin. There are certain gut bugs that are correlated with improving serotonin levels, which we know can help kind of work with the medication um, or support that or support if you're not on a medication, but there are some um, connections that supporting these gut bugs can do. So what do we do? So to support our gut microbiome with food. So these are the five R's of gut restoration. And the one that we uh, focus on for the gut microbiome is re-inoculate the beneficial bacteria. And that is what we'll look at. So what does that mean? To introduce something such as a microorganism into a suitable situation for growth. So we're just feeding ourselves good gut bugs, good bacteria, healthy microorganisms, and we're feeding ourselves what those gut bugs like to eat. Because if they go hungry, they're not going to be happy, and they're less likely to build families, communities, and neighborhoods, right? So we want to reestablish or um, consume the good gut bugs and the food that they want. So when do we use, well, you know what? I'm gonna come back to that actually. Let's look at the food. So prebiotics are the food that feed the good gut bugs. Probiotics are the foods that contain the good bacteria. So we wanna consume both. There's like, there's a lot of research still happening, um, but some re research will show that actually consuming the prebiotics that feed the good gut bugs is more important than actually consuming the good gut bugs. Because, but that, that's really gonna depend on everyone uh, or on each body, everybody's different. But what I want you to get out of that is that it's important to focus on both. Um, so if you're, you know, choose one first, if you're not getting probiotics, maybe start with that. Um, and if you're already getting probiotics, it's important that you're getting these prebiotic foods. So these are, um, in some fibrous foods, not every fiber is a prebiotic, but it's a non-digestible food that feeds the good bacteria in the gut. These foods are going to help with similar things that probiotics help with or that our microbiome is regulating like our blood sugar, nutrient um, production, immune system function, and digestion. So maybe take a screenshot of this list if you don't have it or take a picture. Um, let me know if you want me to email you this list, if you can't do either of those right now, but the prebiotics list is nice because some of these are kind of common foods, right? So what do we want to do? Consume a variety of these foods regularly. It's really important with supporting your gut microbiome that you're consuming prebiotic and probiotic food sources regularly because they're not just going to stay balanced on their own. And so looking at this list, maybe choose the foods that you like on here and um, start with those. Make sure you have some of those around, consume them regularly. And then probiotics. So these are, the, these are actually consuming those live bacteria, yeast, fungi, um, and that promote health in the body. And these are gonna be from fermented foods. So, Sometimes it's not as common as the other list, but if you haven't tried kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, those are delicious. There's a ton of brands out there now too, making them taste even better. The important thing with these fermented foods is for example, like sauerkraut, you wanna make sure that it has live raw cultures to actually get that probiotic benefit. Um, yogurt is a common one too. I suggest doing a plain yogurt so you're not getting any added sugars. Um, but just know that you don't want to only rely on yogurt because you're only going to get certain bacterial strains. So looking at this list, I'm going to choose the other items on there. So I'm going to go back real quick. So with the probiotics, I often get asked, how uh, should I take a supplement and how much should I take? Well, talk to your doctor or see me for one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but there are clinical uses of probiotics. And so 
that go beyond the gut. And so um, we'll look at the amounts recommended in general, but I, again, I do want to either talk to you or talk, you should talk to your doctor to really get the amount that's right for you. Um, so for GI health, it can help with dysbiosis and inflammatory and just uh, kind of um, quality of life GI symptoms, skin conditions, immune health, cardiovascular health. So this is using probiotics as a supplement has been shown to improve all of those. And why is that? Well, the probiotics are helping our gut microbiome, but we need we want to consume those through food, not only re not rely on that um, probiotic supplement, and then also consume those prebiotics to support that. I see that we have something in the chat. Awesome. Okay, I'll answer that in a second. So how much do I need? So basic supplementation for probiotics is 15 to 20 billion colony forming units per day. And um, I would say that, well, if you're taking a probiotic, here's what I suggest. Check your probiotic supplement and see how many billion CFU colony forming units is in the serving size that you're taking. From my experience clinically, with over eight years of experience in multiple different settings, I'd say most people are taking like one to two billion colony forming units per day, maybe five if we're lucky, from a supplement if they haven't been told by a practitioner or instructed. And that's okay, that's great, I'm glad. Let's start with less and increase, right? Um, but sometimes my point of bringing this up is sometimes people will say, well, I took probiotics for a while and I didn't notice anything at all and they didn't work. Um, and if that's you, I would love to maybe meet with you. We offer a free uh, supplement consultation to go through what you're currently taking or answer your questions um, because it might be that based on your health needs, maybe you need closer to this basic supplementation amount of 15 to 20 billion colony forming units. It's a really common thing that I've heard over the years and how are we supposed to know, right? Here you are educating yourself, love it. You're in this class learning. So um, if you've noticed that or that's happened to you, let's talk. Um, and then during an antibiotic, uh, if while taking the medication, oftentimes um, you can take the probiotics with it. 20 to 50 billion colony forming units per day is the amount recommended then. These are clinical uses here. So for somebody who has inflammatory bowel diseases or disease or a GI condition, um, 50 to 200 billion colony forming units per day is the standard dose. I've even had um, worked with Crohn's patients who have Crohn's disease that their doctor prescribed it to them to 900 billion colony forming units per day. So if that, if you have Crohn's disease or any inflammatory bowel disease, definitely talk to your doctor. Um, but these are the clinical uses for that. And so they can be really powerful when used in the right way. And then something to know if you're a person who travels and you always get kind of weird gut symptoms um, or maybe traveler's diarrhea, or maybe you're experiencing loose stools yourself. Saccharomyces boulardii is a strain that isn't in every single probiotic supplement, but it is in some if you're looking for the right one. And that can actually help with specifically with that symptom of loose stools. And um, so again, if you're interested, if that's something you're experiencing, maybe we should do a one-on-one -on -one consult. We have that, offer that free supplement consult um, where we could talk about that too. But just something to know about um, that isn't necessarily listed everywhere. And then it's important that if you're taking a probiotic supplement, um, so commercially prepared probiotics may stay in you, the host, for up to two weeks. So you want to be consuming the foods that support that regularly. And if you take that supplement for a few days, you might not notice anything. Um, you want to be taking that consistently for a while to really see the benefit. So I'm going to move on now to our final slides here about one of our um, programs that supports gut health. Please chat in any questions you have. I know we only have two minutes left, so I want to make sure that I get to any of those questions. So one of our group programs that's offered virtually is our Nutrition Detox Program. It's a five-week program. We meet five times, four weeks in between of making changes, being supported and guided. And it leads you through an anti-inflammatory 
elimination diet protocol that's supporting your gut microbiome and that the five R list that you saw there, it's kind of, it's checking off the boxes for all of those actually. So removing the common food triggers, eating the nutrients, consuming high amounts of nutrients that help with um, gut health and optimizing gut function and your gut microbiome. It does include a professional grade supplement kit. You can see a picture here. The reason we use this is it kind of helps jumpstart the whole five weeks or um, the whole program. And it has nutrients in here that are gonna support your gut and your liver to detoxify um, for normal detoxification purposes. So this is just an example of the outline to tell you a little bit more. We talk about toxins in your health um, and uh, digestion in your health. We have a little bit of an education piece each week, prebiotics and probiotics, of course, how to restore your health with food. Why do we even say food as medicine? Food can work like medicine. We're not against medicine. Sometimes we need that for sure, but food can work like that. It is super powerful. And so it's four weeks of making changes. These are just a few examples of uh, real clients who have been in the program, completed it, and shared their story. They found out that food was contributing to multiple symptoms that, that weren't necessarily gut symptoms, but because of the gut connection, they were impacting other areas of their body. So this person did have a decrease in bloating, but she also figured out uh, why she was having allergy symptoms all the time. Um, runny nose symptoms. This person figured out what was triggering hot flashes. And then um, this person, well, identified a lot of habits that uh, weren't serving him, but also had a significant, he happened to have his labs done right before and had a significant improvement in lab values. Uh, his sleep apnea improved tremendously, didn't think that could happen. Energy improved, weight, et cetera. So that I just want to share with you um, and that the next one is starting in October. And we have a question here. I feel like I hear about detoxes all the time. What makes this difference different? Yeah, great question. So I know the word detox is thrown out there a lot in the nutrition and kind of wellness world and it's misused a lot. So I'm really glad that you brought that up um, because detox, there's two definitions. One definition is to be withdrawing from a substance um, like alcohol or drug or something. The other definition is uh, your body's natural detox process that your liver, kidneys, and gastrointestinal system work to do with everything that we're taking in regularly. It's impossible to avoid toxins 100%. So it's just our natural detox process. So when we say nutrition detox, we are supporting your body in the natural a detox process with the nutrients it needs, reducing your toxic burden, with reducing the um, chemicals and inflammatory foods you're taking in, all with guidance, support, and a group. I'm meeting virtually every week for one hour. If you have to miss it, you can um, watch the recording that I've already done of all those uh, classes or topics for you um, as well, so you don't have to miss out. And let's see, I think that's the other only other question that I saw in there. Yeah, so if you're interested in the um, nutrition detox or the supplement consult, I would love to see you. You know, it's a great time of year to really focus on your health. Fall is a great transition season of just focusing, having a routine and being able to focus on you and have some healthy habits. And so, especially like before the holidays, Focusing on your health is great and doing something like nutrition detox can be super helpful to so kind of go into the holiday time um, feeling like your health is great and you're not going to be kind of craving all those typical holiday foods that are around that maybe won't support your health as much, but maybe feel more balanced going into it um, and still get to enjoy those. So I will uh, we'll be sending you a follow-up email. I don't see any other questions coming in. so. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I really hope to meet you soon and hear from you soon.